The second half of the 19th century saw the increasing precision and design of the Industrial Revolution take firm hold of the progress in weapons of war. Powered machine tools enabled steel to be cut and finished with a precision that allowed for accurate gears, fine finishes, and potentially airtight breaches on cannon. At the core of this advance was a then 300-year-old metallurgical and machining firm called Krupp in what is now Essen, Germany. Krupp still exists as a merged entity with the Thiessen conglomerate. But in the mid-19th century, it was emerging as the dominant weapons producer anywhere in the world. Krupp's research advanced the steel, tooling, and design to make breached loading cannons feasible and practical. The process to achieve this took decades, but the landmark success came with the production of the Krupp C64 80mm field gun, a steel cannon with a barrel weighing 290 kilos. It had an effective range for solid shot of 3,000 meter, far in excess of any light field gun of its day. As with other transitional periods and ages, the bulk of the move forward from muzzle-loading cannons to breech-loading was often a single instance of converging elements that created a new instance of something groundbreaking and epoch-changing. The C-64 was such a device, though it was not without teething problems, problems that arise during the versions from prototype to idealized form. The American Civil War had shown the lethality of post-Napoleonic warfare for any power willing to pay attention, and the ambitious Prussian kingdom was paying careful attention to how war was changing. Since 1640, the Prussian general staff had existed as an internal military think tank that modeled likely wars, devised logistical and mobilization plans, and studied the ways and methods of war as the Prussian army was likely to fight it. With this foundation, along with the innovative genius of Otto von Bismarck as a political and social leader, Prussia advanced towards Germany's unification and empire. By 1864, Krupp was ready to field early versions of the wedge-breached 8cm cannon. This would later become the C-64. It sold these early versions to Romania and Turkey. The Ottomans contracted to buy over 500 of the obviously superior devices while the American Civil War trundled on with muzzle-loading, minimally rifled designs. Machine tooling in the rest of the world, with the exception of a few firms in the United Kingdom, simply wasn't ready for the precision required of the C-64. The C-64 was ultimately deployed into horse artillery of the Prussian army as its main weapon adding mobility and a strike mission to the innovative design. Its heavier sister, the C-67, was entered into service with the infantry. Together, these two weapons gave Prussia a long-armed punch no then-current power could rival. Meanwhile, the French army of Napoleon III had its heart and soul tied to the former glory of Napoleon I. The bright colors of their uniforms and their system Nahit brass cannon were more fitting of the first half of the century than the latter half. Even so, France was reckoned as a leading military power in the world on land at the time. So, the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 was by no means seen as a likely Prussian victory at the time. France was wealthy, had vast food production for the times, and maintained a professional officer corps. Yet, even in contemporary Ukraine, the importance of artillery to the battlefield is central, and its power to strike an enemy with a dizzying and terrifying blow remains central to breakthrough tactics. The French César gun system may be the most modern piece of artillery on the battlefield today. It shares many features of the C-64, such as high relative precision of aim, faster servicing by a smaller crew, and superior mobility. But, in 1870, the French Lahit brass cannons were no serious match for the C-64. The French were caught unaware in their serious deficit of capabilities in the face of the Prussian field gun. While there were several battles and the Great Siege of Paris in the Franco-Prussian War, the defining battle came at Sedan in France, a greatly fortified border town that was essentially the front door for the Prussian army to attack Paris. 
Anyone who has visited Sedan will immediately notice the formidable ring of hills above both sides of the town. For a gun with an 8 degree arc of fire, these hills presented an ideal venue to control the battle. On the 1st and 2nd of September of 1870, the two great armies collided, with the French under their emperor, who commanded troops on the battlefield, attempting to use superior positioning and infantry numbers to encircle the Prussians. The high hills surrounding Sedan created the perfect venue for mobile, accurate artillery to pound the French infantry whenever they attempted to mass. French guns had neither the range nor the accuracy of the German pieces, and so were either systematically targeted themselves or ineffective in responding to the shattering of their own infantry. The result was the French army being smashed, with over 100,000 being taken prisoner, including the Emperor himself. While the war raged on, Sedan essentially presaged the outcome. The C-64 was decisive in winning the victory. So, what exactly made the C-64 such a game-changing technology? First, its breech loading, loading from the back, enabled it to be loaded and fired faster than its muzzle-loading counterparts on the French side. Second, its highly machined rifling engaged with the shells that expanded to fit when they were fired. This gave the shells a spiral, like an American football quarterback's long passes, enabling high accuracy and greater range. In virtually every way, mobility, range, and accuracy, the Prussian field piece could put deadly and decisive concentration of force where it was needed and when it was needed to hammer French infantry and batteries. This decisive battle in a crucial war set a path for German-French history that was directly echoed and followed by World War I, and in that sense, World War II, where another important battle was fought at Sedan in 1940. The Krupp gun changed the impact and expectations of field guns and made standing in the open under the fire of cannons impossible in any future wars. War had changed from ranks of colorfully dressed men in rows to something that now required fortresses and trenches. Many specialist details such as a wedge block and the use of something called the Broadwell ring design, an innovation of an American engineer, made the C-64 the leading gun of its time. But it was essential that the Krupp Works had the machine tools to process and refine the parts and barrels of the rifled gun. Such attention to industrial precision was just emerging around Europe, such as with the Whitworth rifle and the Gatling gun in the United States. These advances presaged the World War I machine gun, French 75, and other key weapons that would be used to devastating effect nearly 50 years later. Here on the channel, we show how technological advances created and shaped the world around us. Any subscriptions help us to continue unsponsored and unbiased. Otherwise, thank you for watching.